cloud. Illustrious mm. cloud. So there we go. All right, cool. We are live. So everybody, I think, let me look. Welcome to the uh, Mortgage Loan Officer Network Survivor Series. So Fish, you want to go ahead? This was really, I don't want to say your, you know, 100% your idea, but you really kind of honed in on this concept when we were talking about this, kind of like what some of our, our content for fourth quarter 22 and one in the first quarter 23. This was something you were really, really passionate about. Yeah, I just, you and I have always tried to make MLO Network a place where people would connect and work together and help each other out. And, you know, I've just seen a lot of these other communities just be about pitching and selling things and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, there's some of that that happens. And you and I both have some products that we represent, you know, but at the end of the day, we really wanted the folks that would come in and give and help each other to, to have a place where they felt comfortable, have a place where they could connect and meet new people. And over the years, I've heard all kinds of stories of loan officers meeting people through our networks or picking up great tips on how to run their business through the things that we did. And that's really what drives us. Um, and that's kind of what has kept us doing what we do here in MLO Network. And, you know, for those of you watching, it just I, I've always said to people one on one, I don't know if I said enough on camera, but these are the kind of things that you can do yourself. I mean, you can be bigger than who you are when you put yourself out there on social media and camera. Next thing you know, you become that person that's bigger. Um, you know, I might have been somebody who was just writing a fair amount of loans for a long time. But when I started putting myself out there in video and social media and doing all these things, all of a sudden I was at a different level. I, I knew more people. I had more things. I had more opportunities. And it came from getting out of my comfort zone, jumping on camera, making the connections, doing the kind of stuff we're doing right now. So and, and honestly, you just got great hair these days. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, like every time I hop on, I'm jealous. But to me, man, this is what MLO Net was created for, like the environment we're in today, right? We built these groups, you know, a couple that we've had over the years. I mean, it's been, what, seven years since kind of been doing this type of thing. But we built these groups to help other loan officers and, and to help ourselves as well during tough times, right? And, and, and this is as tough a time as a lot of people have seen. So with that being said, like, let's jump into it, man. This is MLO Net Survivor Series. This is about bringing, as I said, some of our good MLO Net loan officer friends on here, sharing what they're doing as we're wrapping up 22, moving into 23, really getting their business set up for the next year. So Fish. Every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m., right? Every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. We are actually holding ourselves to that. One of us. We'll be on this. One of us will be on this. Hopefully both of us, but one of us will be on here. And like I said, we'll try to keep the 10 to 15 minutes at the most. So when we were coming up the concept for this, everyone, I said, you know, there's no one that I would rather have on as our first guest than Michael Fisher, right? So Fish, like I said, that's why we're starting this off. So you're interviewing me. Wow. I'm interviewing you. Lots so. Yeah, well, I, I always do the interviews. You you, you do, the, you started off and I always take over, but now, um, so, but. Seriously, man, you started going into it a little bit. ML and that's watching. We got 47 people here. We're going live in the group. Tell me what's going on right now. You're still, you're still writing loans. You're still being successful, correct? My, my world, you know, still most of what I make and most of what I do revolves around production, production for my branch, production for myself, production for my company. Um, you know, I don't always do as much individual production, but I certainly do a, enough that I'm in the trenches and I, you know, I got to know what's going on. I got to know how to help my team and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, for me right now, I thought about this before this call and I said, wait a second, what are my, what are my big three things that have kind of got me to where I'm at that I need to really hone in on and focus in on because it's kind of what's gotten me and what's going to keep me moving. And it's, it's this really high level stuff. So, so number one, high level. When people need help, I actually help them. Crazy, right? It's just crazy. Rather than getting mad because someone's got bad credit or annoyed because I don't like a certain loan officer or whatever, just when people need help, actually help them. That opens the door to make all these connections. So, so it's it's it, that simple concept. Now that spins off into, oh, you could waste a bunch of time if you all you're ever doing is helping people. Never be missing. I totally get that. So I've had to over the years learn how to help people quickly. One of the things that I've done to do that is I have a whole bunch of videos. I have a bunch of digital assets that when somebody needs my help, 
instead of saying, hey, I'm going to call you for a half an hour, I send them a video and say, hey, can you watch this? Does this help you? Does this answer your question? Will this get you on the right track? I do it with open borrowers. I do that with other loan officers. I, I do that a lot. So having those digital assets is what I work on in the background so I can help people. And then once I help those people, if I don't know them personally, I try to get them on the phone, which is my next big thing. My next big thing is having a big ask. You know, if you want big things, you have to ask for big things. Those who ask get, right? If I only ask for small things, hey, can you be my friend on Facebook? Can you reply to my message? Can we schedule a call on, on Wednesday? That's not big enough. Like my goal is to help you build wealth through, you know, through your whole entire life and to manage debt through your whole entire life if you're a homeowner. Or my goal is if you're a loan officer to help you build your career and find success and help all these buyers in America. We all need to be united front. We need to help them manage debt. We need to help them build wealth. It's not just about saving one eighth today or 500 bucks today. It's a long-term goal. So I want to teach all the LOs to teach their folks to do that. And then to build a brand that people know stands for great advice. And so, so, you know, again, a big ask. So when I get these folks on the phone and I want to help them, I have to remind them, hey, I just help you. You're maybe not buying anything from me today, but here's the ways that you can help me. Hey, I'm licensed in all these states. You're not licensed in these states, Mr. L.O. You could potentially help me if I, you know, if, if you find somebody moving into that state or my area or what have you. Yeah, and let me jump in. Let me jump in. So you're talking about a giver's game mentality, right? Yep. Now, and, and I know because you you work with so many loan officers across the country, you, you, you've you networked with them, but you also do this locally, right? You do this, you know, I'm, I'm looking at your shirt. You got your veteran mortgage advisor sh shirt on right there, right? You have built a brand, you know, with again, with this giver's game mentality of saying, hey, I am here to help the veteran buyer, Right. Hopefully they're working with me, but if they're not, I am still here to, to help. So in this situation, what you're talking about, you have built this brand. You're known as the veteran specialist there in, um, where, 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 what office you're out of these days? It's North of Ann Arbor, Brighton, Michigan. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, um, you know, so you're up there and, 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 but, but all around the Detroit metro area, like you're known as the VA mortgage specialist, right? So a real estate agents having an issue with a VA client, they may call you. You're not trying to steal the deal. Mm -hmm. You're helping them. You're like, hey, here's what needs to be done mm -hmm. to help this client close. But now that you've done that, you've earned the right to ask for additional business from that real estate agent. 100%. Yep. And Michael, so can I count on you yeah. to send me your next client that needs to be pre-approved? I hope it's a BA buyer because that's my specialty, but anyone that you need, please, can I count on you to send that to me? Yeah, I like that line. And you and I have talked about that five, six years ago. I use that all the time. Can I count on you to, to, you know, so the door opener is not, can I have your next deal? The door opener is, is I'm here to help. I'm really good at this one thing. And that kind of moves into, you know, my, my next part of what I was going to say. My, my third big thing is the more hands you shake, the more money you make. So I think a lot Tim of us Pasquarella. Don't Tim Pasquarella 101 right there. It, it's, a lot of us don't get in front of enough people. We don't shake enough hands. We don't have enough coffee meetings. We don't, you know, talk to enough people on social media. We don't dial the phone enough. We don't text enough. When we do, it's random. It's not intentional. Um, you know, making lists of people that you want to contact, contacting them, and then making more lists. But being very intentional in what you do, finding people that are the most likely to interact with you. Um, you know, some of my, my coaching friends say like, "Hey, you have a top fifty list. You have a top hundred list. You have a you know fifty friends or family, whatever." There's a lot of different approaches to that, but you know, you got to work through these different levels of of relationship and build stronger relationships with the people that are more likely to, to refer you and know you really well. So, you know, for me, if we're cutting this off at 10 minutes, we only got a minute or two left, and that goes into what are my plans for the next, you know, few months. And it's 100% doubling down on what's got me to where I'm at, which is I, I've got to be very specific about classes and events and, and things that I'm putting out there. The message I'm putting out to my sphere, hey, we're really good at this. We have a passion for this. You know, we're exceptional at, at VA loans. And of course, once I make these relationships, I tell the people how they can help me out. I tell them how I can help them out. I tell them when to come to me. And then when they come to me, like I said, I have a big ask. I say, hey, I hope that helped you, you know, get that VA loan to closing, Mr. Realtor, Mrs. Realtor, or what have you. And I hope that, you know, I have a chance to work with your next veteran, your next veteran client, or what have you. That one hopefully comes to me. So it's it's doing more of the same and making more of the connections. Now, some people think, hey, I really have to invest all my energy 
with the top producers that I currently know and kind of reinvent all these relationships. And yes, part of that's true, but I, I still think that we have a whole lot of people that we know that it's like, the, you know, this whole Kevin Bacon, six, seven, eight, nine degrees of separation that mm -hmm. we don't think about. Case in point, kind of following my whole, you know, my whole process, helping people, asking for stuff. Um, I had got my, you know, my car fixed a couple of years ago and I went back to one of my customers and I got him on my rotation. He's in my Facebook feed. He's in my emails. I call him, you know, once a quarter, once every half year or whatever. And I just remind him, Hey, super important to me to help all the people that, you know, you work at this auto shop, any of the other guys ever need me. That's what I'm here for. You've got 2.75%. You're debt free. You're probably never going to need me again, unless you buy a second home and you probably pay cash, but your boys, the guys that you're there, the gals in the front office, they probably do need me. Remember me, you know, making those calls, planting those seeds. I remember planting that specific seed two or three months ago. I'm literally driving down the road today, nine mile, not eight mile. You know, I know it's a little bit, a little bit crazy for you guys. We have different mile roads, not just eight mile. And I get a text from guess who? Another mechanic that works with the same guy in the same shop. I happen to be two miles away because I'm planting all these seeds locally. I literally drive in, take an app by hand, old school style, plug it into my computer. And as soon as we hang out with this call, I'm going to try to finish it. And I connected him to one of my favorite realtors and he's looking at a house at four o'clock today. But again, it just comes down to this concept of remembering to help the people that need help and then ask them to help you. And they already know, like, and trust you. Uh, most of us aren't getting enough from the people we already know. And it's not just the big, huge top tier producers that we know. We know lots of people that can help us. And sometimes it's just a few extra calls, a few extra Facebook messages. I'm going to close it up with you. You know, you, know, you and I introduce a lot of these concepts with, with you calling me Facebook fish. Absolutely. I message the crap out of people. It's part of the reason I have affinity on Facebook because I use Messenger a lot. I use groups a lot. I use the business pages a lot to drive people to interact with me. But once I have that connection on social, I 100% pick up the phone, call people, find my way to shake their hands, to meet them in person, to strengthen the relationship. I ask them how I can help them. Then I make sure I tell them how they can help me. And I keep that relationship moving along. So for me, 100%, I'm doubling down on relationships. I'm doubling down on the time that I invest in people. And I'm doubling down on how much I ask people to help me. So if you're an MLO net and I've helped you, I'm licensed in a lot of states. I've got lots of programs I can help you with, but I can use some help from time to time too. So again, I'll just put it out there. You guys can do the same thing. You can absolutely be part of this success series. You can tell other people how they can help you. And it's not just, oh, you can come work on my team. I mean, sometimes you have a product, you have a state, you have something that somebody else doesn't have. And you never know who's going to need you until you put it out there and you ask. So, All right. I want to jump in here and summarize this because we are over. I knew we would be on this first one, and that's okay. Right? So a um, couple of things that you put out there, bullet points that you put out there during this conversation today. One, brand building, putting yourself out on social, on video. Right? Make sure you're doing videos. Make sure you're consistently posting. Make sure you're working in your local Facebook groups. Right? Make sure that as you make connections, you're meeting with people. Two, be intentional with your daily prospect, right? And I think that's something that's really missing for a lot of loan officers' business is intentional prospecting. Don't just come in here and say, okay, I want to make a bunch of calls today. Who am I calling? Why am I calling them? What am I calling them about, right? Three, it's consistently asking for the business, right? And not just, hey, Mr. Realtor, I'd love to take you out for a cup of coffee to learn about what makes you so cool right? But your mechanic, your buddies that you play golf with, you know, if you speak to enough people every single day over the course of one, two, three months, that's a lot of people that you've planted those seeds. And then to me, Fish, the most important thing, and this is a, these are long-term strategies and that's part of Survivor Series, right? Part of this is focusing on these long-term strategies so that if your production's down in 22, when the market turns in 23, you're going to make up for a portion of that production, right? but it's the giver's gain mentality. It's helping people out that need help. You know, putting, I mean, whether you're into the woo-woo stuff or not, putting that karma out there that says, hey, I am helping people because that law of reciprocity is going to bring that back to you and gives you the right to ask for that business in the future. So anything else to add to all that, man? I love it, man. I'm going to close it out with the old village analogy. Like 
if your village is looking like a tough winter is going to come, what are you going to do? I mean, are you going to sit there and, and just hope you're okay? No, you're going to keep trying to plant more things. Hopefully, you know, something comes up. You're going to harvest what's already out there. You're going to send more hunters out there. You're going to do all of the things, not just one thing. Do all the things. Check the back of your, you know, your house and the village mentality. Make sure it's running as smoothly as possible. But when you don't have enough resources, do everything possible to get all those things out there. The, the seeds that you need to plant, the harvest that you forgot to, to bring in, and you know the hunting that needs to be done. I think some of us get stuck in the one category. I'm just the hunter. I'm just the hunter. I never harvest. Or you know I don't care how the back of my operation works. Or oh, I'm Mister Operation, but I never hunt. So it's it's the whole picture. Looking at your business, figuring out what do I need to do when I don't have enough loans. We got to talk to more people. We have to have more seeds being planted. Got to have more swings in the bat and more opportunities. Because there's still people closing. There's still LOs out there closing a lot of units. I promise you the ones that are doing that have more opportunities at the plate than you do most of the time. Yes. So but the same there, hours in the there's, day. There's still pie out there. You just got to get a bigger piece of it. Right same now. hours in the day, 100%. Yep. So cool. All right, right, let's wrap it up on that. MLO Net, thank you very much. We appreciate it. This is our first one. We're going to be consistent with these. We'll get better. We'll get them a little bit more dialed in. Join us on Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can only say that for a little bit longer here um for our good friend ashley renee corbell so she is an mlo net favorite we're excited to get ashley on here on thursday we'll talk to you comment below if you have any questions anything we can help you guys out with appreciate you guys